amounts of water carving these canyons in addition. So do, do you believe that this, these were uh, events that, if we talk about the, the carving of the, of the Grand Canyon specifically, it's theorized that this have taken millions of years to do, but uh, other theories out there, and I, I'd reckon that you would be one of these as well, proponents for this, that it would actually, it, that went fairly quickly because the amounts of water right. that came, uh, came rushing through that, right? Right, you have to completely revise geology uh, because most geology is um, based on the idea of gradualism. And in fact, it was geology itself was formed as a reaction against catastrophist thinking mm. from 100 years ago when they were proposing uh, to look for evidence of the flood. And uh, they were actually considering catastrophic floods at that time. And uh, there was this reaction that set up geology um, with the idea that we could explain things in terms of slowly moving glaciers. You know? yeah. So the, the, uh, we went from one extreme to the other, and, and now uh, to find the truth, that's what we should really be after. We have to go more towards the, the catastrophism again. I, I would definitely agree with that. And so but would you say primarily that this is, events that are driven by the sun then you mentioned cmes and 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 solar flares and things like that that our climate obviously is hugely affected by the mass amount of energy that is coming out through the through the sun is that correct right um <clears throat> but it's something that um you, you need a change of the solar system to put the sun in that state and that involves cosmic dust entering in huge amounts yeah and um See, all of the, this whole scenario, it came as a result of, of my decoding a, uh, a time capsule message, if you want to call it, uh, that was put out in the stars, the Zodiac Constellation. And um, what it was talking about was that the center of our galaxy exploded and that the cosmic rays from there reached us on a certain date in the past. And when I finally understood what I was saying, I, I went through reasoning. This was before I did my PhD. I was at that time looking for a, a topic to, to, to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I reasoned, well, if this really happened, uh, you would expect it to push cosmic dust into the solar system because solar system is surrounded by all sorts of frozen cometary debris that's sort of circulating around us. And if if you had these, this barrage of cosmic rays coming at you, it would have vaporized a lot of this material and pushed it in like a dust cloud. And so I figured, you know, that something could be tested. And uh, for my PhD, I tested ice from Greenland and from Antarctica. Uh, and I, in fact, found very high levels of cosmic dust uh, during the, at certain times during the Ice Age, which proved the uh, hypothesis. And, and when you do that, of course, when you drill down like that, uh, how, uh, can you d determine then uh, exact dating of this? Do you agree with the, the current one? I'd reckon that the, they, they talk about every layer that you can see in the ice uh, represents a, a year, if, if I'm not mistaken. Do, do you agree with that? And if so, uh, could this be pinpointed to, to a specific date? Well, you can actually get layers even less than a year. Uh, now they've got ways of doing what they call continuous sampling, uh, where they melt the ice and continuously sample the meltwater so they can get down to month resolutions or, or even less than that. Uh, you could go down to weeks of resolution. Uh, some of these measurements, they can get down to millimeters in the ice. Um, like the conductivity... Uh, uh, there's, so they measure ice conductivity, and that shows how acidic the ice is and also how much dust it has. And uh, <clears throat> some of those can measure uh, – it's like a, a one-centimeter moving average that they can output in terms of millimeters, actually. Yeah. So when you, when you d uh, did the drilling then, uh, did you come up with a, with a date in terms of when – when this uh, particular event uh, occurred? Uh, well, the, the date came from the, uh, from the uh, 
original message, but that it wasn't just my work, it was a lot of other people's work too, like the beryllium 10 studies that had been done. And when I was uh, working on the ice core, the dates weren't known that well, uh, like on the cores that I was sampling. Mm. And it was later as we learned more about dating these records that we began to see what were these true dates. I, I found that actually I had sampled a time that was before the message was talking about. So, but we're talking about a recurrent phenomenon that these outbursts happen about on cycles. Well, you see cycles in the brilliant 10 data that are like a 25,000 year cycle. Uh, another one is around 11,500 years and another one around 5,800 years mm. close to the Mayan calendar cycle. So it's a recurrent phenomenon. Uh, and considering that we haven't had one of these since uh, about 11,000 years ago, uh, a large one anyway. There was a small one around the time of the beginning of the current Mayan cycle, mm -hmm. 5,300 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it shows that we're currently overdue for another event. So that's why we should be interested. That is correct, absolutely. And one of the things that you found as well, I guess, is... Uh, uh, as evidence for this or, or as proof for some of these theories is, to, is in terms of iridium and, and uh, nickel. You even found gold in a few samples, didn't you? Right. I'm the first to find uh, gold in polar ice. And uh, if you had a lot of it at that concentration, it would be an uh, economically mineable ore deposit. But you're <laughs> really? dealing with you know, only micrograms of dust <laughs> in the ice, so it's probably not worth it. But you do find uh, gold operations near ice, uh, places where ice is melting, and then they sort of mine the uh, outwash. But actually, a lot of the glacier deposits, you find the gold um, in the gravel. And the way it got there, you don't, well, nobody really explains, a lot, uh, from, at least from the reading I've done, I have not found any explanation of why gold is in mixed in with the rock. But... Once you understand about these glacier waves, the, uh, sudden catastrophic discharges of water from the ice sheets, what, what they do is they, they uh, suspend all of the rock and debris, and the heavier stuff falls first when the wave passes. Uh, you know, like the, the heavy things would fall uh, first, and so you'd have the gravel and the gold at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then gradually, like sand and lighter stuff, and finally, organic matter would be further up. And that's the way you find it. So it looks like a lot of this, uh, these deposits were concentrated by these waves of water. But ultimately, I believe uh, the gold that we have on Earth, a lot of it originates from space. It, it, you find it's very abundant in cosmic dust. So I was particularly interested in, in the gold finding because it, like iridium and precious metals like iridium and platinum, um, it's an indicator for cosmic dust. Mm -hmm. And obviously you, you call this, again, just to preface that, the galactic superwave theory. And I'd like to ask you what what you think or what you believe at this point then that makes the center of our galaxy to, to, to produce these, these incredible waves, uh, explosions of, of energy coming our way. What, what, makes, what drives that, do you know? Um, it's, a, it's a creation that's going on throughout the universe. Um, the, the, a big myth is that there was a Big Bang. Uh, it, from the studies I've done, and I have written a paper in 1986 in a very reputable journal, Astrophysical Journal, which disproved the Big Bang Theory. So mm -hmm. um, in place, you know, what do you put in place if there was no Big Bang? Well, yes. it, it's that you have continuous creation, and matter, in effect, creates more matter. Particles sort of birth uh, individual particles, and that, that goes on at its greatest rate in the cores of galaxies. And this is all consistent with what astronomers see. When they look at the cores of these galaxies, they're pouring out enormous amounts of energy and matter. You know, uh, we have never seen matter falling into the core of a galaxy, uh, and you would need to have that if the cores were black holes. Uh, personally, I don't believe in black holes. I don't think they exist. Right.